Well, good evening, Solid Rock Nation. This is Pastor Brooks. Thank you all for joining us for our virtual Bible study. Uh, it's always good to be able to hear a word from the Lord. So I just want to say thank you again for all of your tuning in and for listening uh, and for getting a word from the Lord. Um, tonight, I just want to encourage someone to, or those of you that are listening to know that God is, is, is there and that we are not in this by ourselves, nor are we ever alone, for he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So I would ask that you would just tune in with us just for a little while uh, as we go to Psalms 139, verses 7 and 8. And maybe I'll use a few more scriptures from Psalms 139 a little bit later. Also, at the end of the Bible study, I will give you a list of the scriptures that I'll be referencing uh, in the lesson tonight. So please, ma'am, please, sir, join in, tune in, get ready, and let's just talk a little bit about the fact that God is everywhere and God is, is, is there. Psalms 139 verse 7 says, whether shall I go from thy presence, spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Uh, if I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, uh, whatever situations arise in our lives, we have to know that God is there. And in the midst of this pandemic and in the midst of all uh, that's going on, um, we got to know that God is there. And when we are rejoicing in his presence, he is there. When we're in the hospital or at home, guess what? He is there. When the sun is shining or when it's raining like it's been doing all week long, guess what? God is still there. He never changes. He said, I am God and I change not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, Solid Rock Nation, he never takes his eyes off of us. He never leaves us alone. He never forsakes us. He's constantly there with us all the time and in every situation. For he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you, but I'll be with you even until the end of the world. God is literally everywhere. He fills all space and time. And uh, Psalms 113 verse 5 says, God dwelleth on high. Joel chapter 3 verse 21 says that he dwells in Zion. But now with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he dwells in our hearts. And not just in our hearts, but in the hearts of every believer everywhere. Men may try to place God in certain limited locations. They try to restrict his movements. But the God I know has no boundaries. Nothing can stop him from moving. He's unlimited by space and by time. So wherever we go and whatever we do, we need to know that God is still there. So I just want us to know today that no matter what we're going through, our God is still there. So listen, um, Solomon wisely uh, raised the question, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? He says, behold, the heaven and the earth and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built in 1 Kings 8 and 27. The question has been asked, where does God dwell and where does God meet his people? And I need to tell you, you can look to a multiplicity of places and find where God has met his people. He met Adam and Eve. They said in Genesis 3 and 8, they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The Lord spoke to Abram in his home country. He spoke to uh, Jacob at Bethel. He spoke to Joseph in dreams. He spoke to Moses through a burning bush. So God can be anywhere and he can speak to us in many different ways. He spoke to Saul on the road to Damascus. He spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos. The Lord spoke to Elijah in a still small voice and he spoke to Isaiah in a magnificent vision. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, that in these last days that God has spoken unto us by his only begotten son, Jesus. But the greatest revelation of the presence of God to mankind is yet to come in eternity. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 says, for now we see through a glass darkly. Uh, for now we can gain God's attention by having a contrite spirit and by obeying his word in Isaiah 66 and 2. Psalms 22 and 3 says, we can invite the presence of the Lord into our hearts 
by praising and adoring our King. See, I get excited, y'all, because the day will come when we won't have to look at him darkly through a glass, but we'll be able to see Jesus face to face. And it's so awesome to know that God came into this world as a man. The Bible says that the word was made flesh and blood in John 1 and 14. The king of glory came as one of us and walked among us as a man in Hebrew chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. Jesus Christ was God's temple while he was on the earth. The Jews heard Jesus correctly when he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up in John 2, 19. But they didn't understand his message. He was not referring to a destruction of Herod's house. Uh, he was talking about the death and resurrection of his own body, the place where God dwelt in radiant fullness. In Ezekiel chapter 48, verses 30 through 35, and these, are the, uh, and these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. The gates of the city shall be the same as the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, three gates uh, southward, three gates on the east, and three gates on the west. You read in verses 31 through 35. And it says in 35, it was around about 18,000 measures. And the name of the city, from that day shall be, the Lord is there. In the book of Ezekiel, that the prophet saw a vision of the city of God. That's the same city that John the Revelator described in Revelations 21. It must surely be the same city in Psalms 46 and 4, which Abraham looked on in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 10. The prophet wrote in Ezekiel 30, 48, 35, it was around about 18,000 measures and the name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. So what a promise, the Lord is there. And that's the promise that we have today to Solid Rock Nation. I just wanna tell you the Lord is there no matter what we go through, no matter what difficult things we experience in our lives, no matter what pandemic we are facing, no matter what's going on uh, with our jobs and our work situation, no matter what's going on in our country, uh, no matter what's going on, we need to know that God is there. It doesn't matter what we're going through. God is there. And listen, nobody can satisfy the longing in your heart like the Lord can. Matter of fact, one of my favorite sayings is, can't nobody do me like Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Look, nobody can heal the hurt in our hearts but Jesus. Nobody can deliver us but Jesus. Nobody can bring us out of whatever is holding us down but Jesus. He'll pick you up. He'll encourage you. He'll bring you out. Uh, you may not be able to help yourself, but you need to know that God is still there. The presence of the Lord is the most valuable commodity that we have today. Why? Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Don't nobody hear me. You got to understand that in the presence of the Lord, we will find fullness of joy. See, God doesn't just want us to experience joy, but he wants us to know the joy and to know it in its fullness. Jesus came to bring us joy in his fullness. That's what he said in John chapter 15, verse 11, I think it is. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You need to know God expects us, and he wants us to have full joy. And see, many times, y'all, uh, the church is misunderstood. Uh, the questions have been asked. Why do folk get so excited about worshiping God? And you know, do you remember when you weren't saved and used to go to church or, and like my case, made to go to church? And you wonder why in the world, you know, why do people dance and praise God? Why is the atmosphere so charged with the very presence of the Almighty God? Uh, the worship and the singing, uh, you know, why, what is that all about? But the church really is made up of ordinary people who have an unusual appreciation for God and his mercy. The church is made up again of ordinary people who've had their fair share of problems and struggles. You need to understand that because uh, we are born again Christians doesn't mean that uh, we don't have to go through trials and tribulations. It doesn't mean that we get a pass from troubles and heartaches. No, we aren't perfect. We do make mistakes, but guess what? We still lift up the name Jesus. We lift up holy hands. We still raise our voices. We still rejoice with unspeakable joy and the fullness of glory. Why? Because we are thankful. 
for everything that God has brought us out of and everything that God is going to do, everything that God is doing in our lives in the present. And, the, and even in this pandemic, we can still give God glory because we know already that he's going to bring us out. That's why we praise him, y'all. That's why we get excited. That's why we worship God, because we know our God is well able to do above and beyond more than we can even ask and or think. So we, we can give God glory. It's because of where he brought us from and where he's taking us to. I still submit to you, just like he said to me at the beginning of the year, this is our season. This is our season. This is our season. I look to be blessed. This is our season of blessing. So we need to know that the presence of God, there's pleasure forevermore. In the presence of God, the psalmist realized something about God and that the trials that he faced may, out, may weigh heavily on your life. But guess what? He had a magnificent expectation for the future. I need to tell somebody that God is not through with us yet. We are going to be blessed even more than we can think. God is doing something in the midst of this pandemic. And the favor of God is worth all the difficulties and all the heartaches, all the hard times that we're going to go through. Just having God's presence, just being in the presence of God and having his blessings upon us is going to certainly be a blessing to us. He loaded us with benefits daily. Every single day when you wake up, God is continuing to bless us. Psalm 16 and 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. God, listen, God doesn't take us around our afflictions. God doesn't help us, cause us to avoid some of the afflictions. He doesn't cause us to avoid discomfort, but he tells us that uh, he'll go through it with us. This is what I like about God, and this is what we have to learn to appreciate about, appreciate about him, is that he blesses us and he goes with us through it, no matter what it is. He says, I'll be with you even in the valley of the shadows of death. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Matter of fact, in Isaiah 43, I think it is, earlier verses, verse 2, I think, he says, when thou passest through the water, I'll be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, and neither shall the flame kindle upon you. In other words, God says, when you go through, I'm going to be there. When you go, if you're right now, somebody I'm talking to might be passing through the waters. Guess what? God is with you. Somebody might be walking through the fire. Guess what? God is with you. No matter where you go, no matter what you're going through, God always goes through it with us. We are never alone. God says, I'm going to walk with you through everything that you have to go through. So look, we ought to be praising and giving him glory, even though we don't see the cure, even though we don't see the end to the pandemic. We still owe God the praise. Listen, we still have our health and strength. He's still working, working miracles in our lives, and he's still God. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, says, be strong and of good courage for the Lord thy God. He it is that doeth go with thee. He it is that is with us. God has given us a promise and that promise, promise is worth more than anything that this world can offer us. Jesus promised that he would fill us with his spirit and dwell with us. It didn't matter if it was in a small group or a large group. It didn't matter if it was a bunch of us or if it was just two or three of us. For Jesus said, you know, in his word in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So if it's just two or three, Kim and I have learned over the years that when we can touch and agree on a thing, that God will be in the midst of it and he'll work it out for us. Some of you need to just touch and agree with your significant others, touch and agree with like-minded kindred spirits and declare and decree a thing and watch God bring it to pass. Look, it's good to know that God moves on the thousands. He sweeps through the waves of, with, he sweeps them with waves of blessings. But it's also equally thrilling to know that God loves us as individuals. God is a personal God. Whatever you need, God is there. Whatever you face, God is there. Whatever is in your mind, God is always there. You can't get in a bind that God can't get you out of. You can't get in a mess that God can't deliver you from. The Bible declares, is there anything 
too hard for God. And I'll say it again. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're going through. You can hold your head up and know that God is in the midst with you. He's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to encourage you. Uh, one common trait of everybody who has ever received anything from God is that they wanted it. And that's where we are today. They were thirsty for it. If you want something from God, you've got to want it. Uh, no wonder the Bible says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness of God, for they shall be filled. Everybody who wanted the blessing, everybody who hungered for the blessing, everybody who was willing to go after the blessing, they got it. And I need to tell you tonight, Solid Rock Nation, that you are no different. If you want it, hunger after it, thirst for it, then you can have it. Uh, they long for God's presence. And the question I raise tonight is, do you really want it? Do you really learn, yearn for the living waters? Do you really want it? The psalmist David said in 42 verse 1, As the deer panted after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. you got to want it. And if you're seeking for it, if you're hungry for it, if you're thirsty for it, if you're going to, if you're willing to go out of your way to get it, then guess what? You, got, you will have it. God will give it to you. God is going to satisfy your hunger. God is going to satisfy your thirst, you know. And listen, y'all, I, I don't know about anybody else, but as I get a little older, I've learned, I'm learning how to thank God just for my salvation. And see, salvation for, for me is more than a formality or a ritual. Uh, but if you have repented and been buried in Jesus' name and water baptism, you can expect to receive the Holy Spirit, right? For Colossians 1.27 says, Is Christ in you the hope of glory? When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you receive it more than a blessing. That's why I'm telling you, this is our season of plenty. It's more than somebody feeling uh, that their sins are forgiven. It's more than receiving a vision from an angel. Miracles are not the evidence that, that folks have received the Holy Ghost, right? The abundance of joy is not the evidence that folk have received the Holy Ghost. The Samaritans had experienced both of these before Peter and John came down from Jerusalem in Acts chapter 8, verses 6 and 8. But it was not until these two apostles laid their hands on them that the Samaritans received the Spirit. We need to base our beliefs on sound biblical doctrine. Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39, He that believeth on me, as the Spirit has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. For thir verse 39 says, but... But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. We must believe according to the Scripture. Apostolic power is still available to those who will act in faith. God is still pouring out his Spirit. He is still with us. The promise that Jesus gave, he said, look, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That wasn't just for Bible times. That's for us right now. God wants to fill us up with joy. The Holy Ghost is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And look, I just stopped by tonight just to encourage somebody. Do Jesus. Try Jesus. He's all right. Look, you ought to get in line with what the Word of God is saying while you're at home, while you have quiet time, while Jesus has put us on pause all of us should be studying our word. All of us should be reading the word of God. All of us should be drawing nigh to God because he declares when we draw nigh unto him that he'll draw nigh unto us. Look at Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 6. He said, the angel of the garden tomb declared of Jesus Christ, he is not here, he is risen. Is that right? Mark chapter 12, verse 27. He is not the God of the dead, but he is the God of the living. That's why we must praise him, because he inhabits or dwells in the praises of the people, of, of his people. He wants us to do well. He says, I will that you prosper, even as your soul prosper. So look, he lives in the midst of believers whose hearts are vibrant with praise and thanksgiving. So this is a season not for us to take down, not for us to compromise, not for us to be depressed not for us to go into a shell, but this is a time for us to discover that the God that we seek after with all of our hearts, that no matter what we go through, he is there. God is there. And I want us to be aware that all we have to do is give him praise and glory. Somebody called him Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is there. 
And I, and I need to tell somebody tonight in this virtual Bible study that if you need forgiveness, guess what? God is there. If you need deliverance, guess what? God is there. If you need strength, God is there. If you need encouragement, God is there. Whatever you need, God is there. For my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I need us to understand. And I'll close with this, that the, 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 our text scripture tonight, Psalm uh, 139 verse 7 says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I go from your presence? Or where shall I flee from your presence? Listen. There's nowhere we can go. First, verse number eight of Psalms 139 says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, guess what? You are there. So nowhere from heaven to hell and nowhere in between can we go that God is not already there. And, and go down. If you skip down a few verses to verse number 13 of the 139 of Psalms, it says, for you formed my inward part. You covered me in my mother's womb. 14, he says, I will praise you for I am fearfully. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Listen, Solid Rock Nation, we got to give God the glory. If God has been there for you through thick and thin, if God has been there for you through ups and downs, then why don't you give God the praise? If God has made a way for you out of the midst, in the midst of all that you've been going through, then why don't you give God a praise? Don't be ashamed to praise him in, a, in your home. Don't be ashamed to pray before your children and your family. Don't be ashamed to let the world know that it, that it was God that did it, and we owe him all the praise. Real quickly, I'm going to give you a list of the scriptures that I quoted and used tonight so that you can go back and study these without having to go back uh, through this whole entire Bible study lesson. So uh, please prepare yourself to write these down. Uh, also, just want to encourage you to come and be with us uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock at uh, 401 Creech Road uh, in our church parking lot. We'll have a stage up and you can come and bring your lawn chairs, set out in front of your cars, or you can come and sit in your car and tune in at, at FM 98.1 and you can hear the service that we're doing live in the parking lot in the coolness of your car sitting in our parking lot. So please come out and be with us Sunday morning. We have a special guest coming and uh, we want to be there and give God glory, honor, and praise for we know that he's going to be there with us. Real quickly, I hope you're prepared to write down these scriptures. Go back and study them. Go back and look over them. Uh, be encouraged that God is there no matter what you're going through. Psalms 139, verses 7, 8, 13, and 14. Psalms 113, verse 5. Joel chapter 3, verse number 21. First Kings chapter 8, verse number 27. Uh, Genesis 3 and 8. Hebrew 1 and 2, Isaiah 66 and 2, Psalms 22, verse 3, John chapter 1, verse 14, Hebrew chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, John chapter 2, verse 19, Ezekiel chapter 48, verses 30 through 35, John chapter 15, verses 11. Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, Isaiah 43 and 2, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, Matthew 18, verse 20, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, Acts chapter 8, verse 6 and verse 8, John chapter 7, verse 38, 39, Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, and Mark chapter 12, verse number 27. Blessings be upon you. We love you all. Look forward to seeing you all on Sunday morning. Thank you for tuning in. Hope that this Bible study will encourage you. We are not yet ready to go back in church, but we are preparing so that when the time comes for us to go back, we will be ready. We will be prepared. prepared. We will have sanitizer. We will have sanitized everything, and we will have a game plan for going back in the church. Uh, not this month, and don't know what the 
uh, law is going to say and the scientists are going to say about next month. But right now, uh, the pandemic, the virus is still spiking in North Carolina. So we don't want to take any chances. Listen, let's pray. God, we thank you now uh, just for allowing us to have a virtual Bible study. Thank you, God. And we trust you, God, that you know what's best for us. We ask now, God, that while we are in this down season and this slow time, that we will spend some time with you, that we will take time to hear what the Spirit has to say to us. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless Solid Rock Ministry in a special way. We ask, God, that you will bless all of those who are tuning in, all those that are listening in, God. We ask, Lord, that you would just let them know that you are still there. You have not left, nor have you forsaken. And God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We praise and bless your name all the days of our lives. And these blessings we ask in Jesus' name, it is so and it is done. Listen, have a blessed evening. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Mandatory that we wear masks when we go out. Stay safe. And God's blessings be upon you. See you all Saturday, Sunday morning. Blessings. Bye-bye.